in the real world, one size never fits all. But in the IELTS exam, one organisation really does fit all letters. Hey, one great thing about IELTS letters is that they are always organised in the same way. It doesn't matter if you are writing a formal, semi-formal or informal letter. It doesn't matter if your letter is to give advice or to complain or to resign from a job. You will always use the same organisation. Yes, one size really does fit all. I think that this is amazing. If you have already finished the essay videos, you will know how much brain space we have to use thinking about organisation. But for our letters, it's simple. We just need to learn one plan and then we can write any letter. So come on, I reckon 25 minutes and you will know how to organise any IELTS letter. Are you ready? Let's go. So, in order to write a letter, we need a prompt. And for this video, we are going to look at this question. And you know that every time we see a new prompt, we should ask ourselves three questions. Number one, what type of letter is this or what's the purpose of this letter? Number two, how formal is the letter? And number three, how many pieces of information should I include? Yes, there are three bullet points, but there might be more than three pieces of information. So, if you did the practice activities from the last video, which I'm sure you did, this should be very easy. So let's just do a mini pause now so you can answer these three questions. Take 10 seconds, off you go. Okay, let's start with the first question. What type of letter is this? Well, I'm a teacher at a school. Somebody has given us money and I have to express my gratitude. This is a letter of thanks. How formal is the letter? Well, I'm a teacher and I'm writing to a company. It's a formal letter. It could also be a semi-formal letter if you think the teacher might know the head of the company, but I'm going to choose formal just to be sure. And finally, how many pieces of information do we need to include here? I think three. We have to express our thanks, that's one. We have to say how the money will be spent, that's again only one. And we have to say how the money will help the students. It doesn't say the ways, it just says how. So here, three is okay. Of course, you can give more than three, you could give more than one way, but three is the minimum. Okay, so we have analyzed the prompt. We know the type of letter, how formal the letter is going to be, how many pieces of information we will include. So finally, it's time for me to show you a letter. I am going to put on the screen my model answer for this task. I want you to pause the video and answer the eight questions. Read the letter and then answer the questions. Are you ready? Off you go. Okay, how was that? Let's look at each question in turn. 
Question number one asked, how does the writer start and end the letter? Well, they start the letter by saying, dear Miss Jones, and they end the letter by saying, yours sincerely, Michelle Cornick. In the IELTS world, we call these the greeting and the sign-off. Every letter you write must have a greeting and a sign-off. But the greeting and sign-off you choose will depend on how formal the letter is. Here we have a formal letter. And when you write formal letters, you have two choices of greetings and sign-offs. And the one you choose will depend on whether or not you know the name of the person you are writing to. If you know the name, you will start by saying, dear, then you will have the title, Miss, Mrs or Mr, and then the surname of the person you are writing to. Never use the person's first name. Also, notice that directly after the surname, we have a comma. You must always do this. Because we know the name of the person here, we end with yours sincerely. Again, we have a comma and then we write our full name, but without a title. So just your first name and your surname. However, if you don't know the name of the person you are writing to, you would start your letter, Dear Sir Stroke Madam. That's the conventional way to start letters when you don't have a name. But this time we won't end with yours sincerely, we will end with yours faithfully. Why? I have no idea. It's just letter writing convention. I always tell my students in a formal letter, you should always have one S, but never two S's. So if you start with dear Mr, you need to end with yours sincerely. There's your S. But if you start with dear sir or madam, so you have the S at the beginning, never have another S at the end. Don't use sincerely, use faithfully. So those are our greetings and sign-offs for formal letters. What about semi-formal letters? Well, we can use the same. Obviously, in a semi-formal letter, you are always writing to somebody you know, so we won't use dear sir or madam, but we will start with dear, then have the title, miss, missus or mister, and then the surname or the family name. You might also need here, Dear Professor as a title, because many semi-formal letters are when you are writing to a university lecturer. Again, we can sign off with your sincerely, but in a semi-formal letter, we can add two more. You could also say, kind regards or best wishes. These are a little bit friendlier. Our informal letters, though, are totally different. Here, we're writing to a friend, so we're not going to say, Dear Mr Jones, if it's our best friend. Here, we will start with Dear, and then a first name, so Dear John, Dear Paul, Dear Susan, you choose the name, and when we end the letter, well, we just need a friendly sign-off. This could be, take care, see you soon, write soon, love if you have a close relationship. Lots of textbooks say you could also use best wishes in an informal letter, but for me, that feels a bit cold. This is your friend. I prefer take care. Also, when we write our name, Obviously, we're not going to write our family name. We will just end with our first name. You can write your real name or you can invent a lovely name just for the IELTS exam. Something that will make you smile. Something like crystal or candy or something interesting. So, greetings and sign-offs are easy. You just need to learn them.
Right, let's move on then to question number two. What information does the writer include in the first and last paragraphs? I have to say these are probably the most important paragraphs in the essay. In the first paragraph, the writer clearly states the purpose of the letter. This is a letter to say thanks. So the writer says, I am writing to express my thanks. In IELTS language, this first paragraph is called the opener. It tells the reader why we are writing the letter. You must always have an opener. However, the opener you have will depend on the purpose of your letter or the type of letter you are writing. That's why we have to be able to recognize the purposes of letters. In the same way, our final paragraph here ends the letter. And it does this by either restating or repeating the purpose of our letter, which we did here, or it tells the reader what we would like them to do next. Here, we are just saying thank you. We don't want a further action. But if we are asking for something, if we are requesting something, we may here tell the reader what we want next. This paragraph is called, can you guess? This is the opener, the closer. Now, just like are greetings and sign-offs. There are standard openers and closers for each type of letter. Yes, you will simply have to learn them. Do you remember when you learned uh, irregular verbs? See, saw, seen, was, were, been, hit, hit, hit. It's the same. I can't help you learn them. What I can do though is give you great openers and closers for each type of letter. And that's what I have done. This is what I call my opener and closer menu. On this piece of paper, you will find every type, every type of IELTS letter. And there is a formal opener, a formal closer, an informal opener, and an informal closer. Now, you will see that there is more than one opener and closer for each type of letter. Why? We only need one for the exam. Well, think of it like this. When you go to a restaurant, what do you usually order? I love red meat, so I will probably order a steak. My sister likes chicken, so she is going to order something chickeny. I've got friends that like fish and other friends who are vegan. Everybody likes something different. So I have given you a lot of choice on this menu. That's why it's a menu. I would like you to look at each type of letter and there are four pages so it might take you 10 or 15 minutes and choose your favorite opener and closer for each type of letter and then when you've done that you can write your unique openers and closers on this table and that's it you simply have to learn them of course, in the rest of the videos, when we look at each type of letter, we will look at the openers and closers again. But I think you should start learning them today. Put this somewhere where you will see it all the time. On your fridge, uh, in your bedroom, in the toilet. It doesn't matter, just learn them. Right, so those are our openers and closers. Let's move on to question number three. What information does the writer put in the middle two paragraphs? Well, clearly this is the meat of our letter. We start with this greeting and we tell them the purpose. Finally, we give the information from the bullets. Now, you will either have two or three main body paragraphs in your letter. 
That will depend on the prompt. Again, the prompt. If one of the bullet points in the prompt tells you to give the purpose of the letter, you will only have two body paragraphs because we always tell the purpose in the opener. That was the case in this letter. If you remember, the first bullet point here said, express your gratitude for the money. We do this in the opener because this is a letter of thanks. Therefore, we only have two body paragraphs, one each for the remaining bullets. However, if you had a prompt that does not give the purpose of the letter in the bullets, for example, do you remember this prompt? from the last video where you have to recommend a holiday to your friend, none of the bullet points say recommend. So we will recommend in the opener and then have one body paragraph for each of the bullets. If you are unsure whether or not you need two or three body paragraphs, my advice is use Three. Three is always better. However, you must never just have one. If you have one, that shows the examiner you don't know how to organize your paragraphs and you will lose points in the coherence and cohesion section. So, two is good, three is also good. It simply depends on the prompt. Question number four, do we really need to ask this question? Does the writer include all of the bullet points? Yes, yeah. I'm shouting, never forget to do this. And never forget that it could be more than three pieces of information in the three bullet points. Now, question number five, does the writer include the bullet points in the same order as the prompt? Well, here, yes, they do, but you don't have to do this. You could change the order that you give the information if you wanted to. That's absolutely fine. As long as you include all the information, the order is up to you. However, in my experience, the bullet points usually give the information in a logical order. So I would only change them if I really felt like there was a good reason to. Now, question number six, does the writer add any information that is not included in the bullets? Yes. If we look, these sentences directly answer the bullets, but these sentences give some extra information. Now, what do I mean by extra information? I don't mean that the writer goes in a different direction and adds lots of unnecessary, unconnected details. What I mean by extra information is the writer extends the bullet points. They don't simply have a list that directly gives the information in the bullets. They extend and expand. This is very important. Hey. Using your imagination to extend or expand the bullet points is a key IELTS skill. Students who achieve a seven or higher always do this. Let's look at an example together. Do you remember the prompt that asks us to complain about a product we bought online? One of the bullet points says, describe what the product was. A student who will achieve a five will simply say, it was a camera. Does this give the information? Yes. Does it sound like a natural letter? No. There are not enough details. 
A student who would achieve a 6.5 might say it was the latest Canon camera model 5D. Now the student has added an adjective, latest, that shows more vocabulary, plus they've given the model. If the shop is going to help you, it would need to know exactly which camera is broken. Students who get a seven or higher though, go one stage further. They don't simply directly answer the prompt, they use their imagination and add details that make the letter feel real. For example, they might say, it was the latest Canon camera, model 5D Mark IV, which I had bought to take on my honeymoon. The prompt doesn't ask us why we bought the product, but by adding this sentence, I'm not only making the letter feel real, but I am using a nice relative clause. I am making my sentence complex. One way of extending the information in the bullets is to give some background information. Again, in our complain letter, the second prompt said, describe what the problem is. For a five or six, you could say the lens was cracked. That has described the problem and has given some nice information. However, it doesn't really feel very realistic. If you write a letter, you wouldn't simply say the lens was cracked. You might give some background information about how you discovered the problem. When I opened the box, I discovered that the lens was cracked. However, the package that the camera was delivered in was undamaged. So I assume it must have left the factory like this. Now I am taking this idea of a cracked lens and I am expanding and explaining it in detail. Please do this. Expanding the points helps you show the examiner your lexical resource or your vocabulary and it gives you a chance to use more complex grammatical structures. So my advice, use your imagination, believe that the letter you are writing is real and then add details to create that reality. You're welcome. Okay, question number seven. Does the writer include an address or a date in the letter? No. Do you remember from the beginning of the last video? You can write these, but they don't get you any extra points and they are not included in your word count. It is just a waste of time. And finally, has the writer written more than 150 words? Yes. If you don't do this, you are crazy. You will lose so many marks for task achievement. I recommend that every time you practice writing an IELTS letter, you do it on the official IELTS writing booklet. That way you will know exactly what 150 words looks like on this paper. The good news is that in my practice activities, the paper I give you is exactly the same as the IELTS paper. Therefore, very quickly, you will find out what 150 words in your handwriting looks like. Make sure you do this. So let's summarize. Every IELTS letter you write will start with a greeting. And the greeting you choose will depend on how formal the letter is. Then you will have your opener, a short paragraph that states the purpose of the letter. Again, this will depend on how formal your letter is, but more importantly, the type of letter you are writing. Every type of letter has its own opener. Then and only then can you start addressing the bullet points. You will either have two or three paragraphs in the main body of your letter. It will depend on whether or not you address one of the bullet points 
in the opener. Then when you've finished addressing all of the information in the bullets, you will write your closer, which will either simply repeat the purpose of the letter or tell the reader what you want to happen next. And finally, you will sign off and write your name. Now, you can remember this organization in two ways. First of all, you could think of it like a mirror because the greeting and the sign off and the opener and the closer reflect each other. I remember the organization like a traffic light. In the red light, I put the greeting and the sign off. You don't start and you don't end without them. Then in the amber light, I put the opener and the closer because you're preparing for the body or you're preparing to end, but you can't quite start. And then in the green light, go, 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 are the body paragraphs. However you remember it, just remember it. This is the organization we will be using for all 15 of our letters. What have we learned in this video? We have learned that every IELTS letter requires the same five components. We will always start our letter with a greeting and end with a sign off. And we will always start the body of our letters with an opener and end with a closer. These four parts of your letter use standard expressions, words that the reader expects to read when they open the letter. Therefore, you simply have to learn them. I can't help you here. It's just a mental task. To help you do this, I have given you a lovely opener and closer menu. You can find this in the practice activities. You should go through each type of letter, choose the opener and closer you like, and complete the table I've also provided. You must learn these. Every letter needs an opener and a closer. As for the body, well, here we will have two or three paragraphs. If the bullets ask for the purpose of the letter, you will have two, but if there is no purpose in the bullets, you will need three, one for each bullet point. You must include all of the information in the bullets. We know this. However, you don't have to include the bullet points in the same order they are given on your exam paper. Usually you will do this, but it's okay to change the order if you want to. What you should do though is extend the bullets. The bullets are just there as a guide. Students who achieve a high score take the bullets and extend them. They use their imagination. Pretend you are writing a real letter, not just a list of bullets. So this is how we organize any IELTS letter. Your job now is to go and do the practice activities. And when you finish those, I'll be waiting for you in the next video where we will learn how to satisfy the IELTS band descriptors, how to maximize our chance of achieving a high score. I'm Shelley, and this is my IELTS classroom. Then at the end of the letter, you will just finish with your phone and our surname or family name. In every... Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you found the content useful, please click like to help the channel and don't forget to subscribe for new lessons every Friday. Plus, you can find more expert content at www.myieltsclassroom.com.